Hello friends. I must congratulate you for taking a very important decision to learn online. Now when you take a decision to learn something online, this requires a different type of commitment, a very, very professional approach, dedication, perseverance, then only you can learn online. If I conclude all the things in one word, that is self-discipline. Without having a very strong self-discipline, learning online is not easy. There is nobody else who is supervising you. You are your own supervisor. If you are committed, you are dedicated, only then the results are going to be there. And when I say professional approach, it means all excuses given up. In this video, I am sharing certain rules for serious study. And I, this is the first video before you formally start in the regular course. And if you follow the rules which I am going to share, certainly success is yours. All the best. Now, the very first rule required, right? Always have notebook and pen ready. Rule number one. If you are learning something, don't just listen. Always, always have your notebook and pen ready and keep on taking notes. So, if you have not picked up your notebook and pen, please pause the video. Pick up your notebook and pen and then we will continue. Okay, you can pause. I am following. So, I told you rule number one. You must always have pen and notebook. I have intentionally mentioned notebook. I have not said paper. Loose papers, you take a note and tomorrow it is kept somewhere. Next time you never see that, it is as good as never written. Formal notebook is required. Right. So this notebook you are going to use for a certain period of time. And at some point of time, if you follow the technique which I am going to share, you will revise this number of times. And once the techniques are or you start following the rules sincerely, these become part of your regular life. Throughout life, you will get the benefit of learning. Okay. So number one, pen and notebook. Number two, rule number two. Now this is a little detailed. There has to be a fixed time and a place. There has to be a fixed time and a fixed place. Now let me explain you one by one what I mean by this. First is about the time. When the courses are online, availability is 24-7, 365. But it does not mean that you keep on changing your time every moment, every day. Or whenever it is convenient to take up for the study. Whenever there is extra time that you can certainly make use, but there has to be a fixed time for study, for learning. Irrespective of your age, irrespective of the stage in your career, wherever you are, you may be a successful corporate executive, you may be a very good professional, or you may be a student, doesn't make a difference, principle remains same for everyone. There has to be a fixed time. Now, when it comes to time, what is normally selected? Late evening, night study. Now, friends, tell me one thing. You have already worked for the whole day. 
you are physically almost exhausted mentally you are tired and then you want to put in some more information in the mind mind is not in the receiving mode simply you end up killing the time simply you end up killing the time a study always has to be with a fresh mind and fresh body your body should not feel tired or exhausted your mind should not be involved into number of things which have gone throughout the day so i always recommend the time has to be early morning hours in early morning hours there is no disturbance even no sound disturbance from outside as well no phone calls no tv almost no disturbance late night all these types of disturbances are always there and from health point of view sitting late is certainly a reason for acidity and gas and these two are the reasons for number of health elements that for that reason also you should avoid late hours of study if you are early riser good enough otherwise slowly develop a practice of getting up early and every day early morning one hour study is good enough rather than 3 hours every day study late night my own experience and i'm sharing experience of my last 3 decades so early morning hours are always always better quite possible you say i cannot get up early morning i cannot sit late evening okay at least the time should be fixed this is something like a meditation whenever you have read or have you have attended any lecture or any seminar or any webinar on meditation everybody has always suggested that there is a fixed time fixed place a study is not less than meditation completely focused so if you keep on changing the time your body cycle is always changing it is not always in the receiving mode so i told you if you have extra time make use of that for learning for revision for some for, for fresh reading that is okay but at least one time you should fix and strictly follow that time right then comes a place the place should also be fixed your study place should not change on day to day basis sometime in the bedroom sometime in the drawing room sometime in front of the television sometime in the class in on the study table that should not happen never ever sit for study or learning in the bedroom number 1 not in front of tv don't keep on changing the place the place has to be fixed now as for this place is concerned there may be a study table there may not be study table i'm not saying that everyone should have a study table but the place should be fixed now this place number 1 this has to be completely decluttered or you can say completely organize the clean and clear place you can experience when you go in a room which is organized you have a different feeling as compared to the room which is not organized properly number 2 there has to be a proper ventilation there has to be proper lighting if brightness is missing very soon you start feeling tired and feel exhausted study gets disturbed fixed place completely decluttered ventilated and properly lighted when you start preparing for study 
then comes i am putting the title study table but this does not mean you need to have a table whichever place you have this study table again this should be completely decluttered only one subject maybe you have to study five subject 10 subject 20 subject that is okay but at one point of time your study table or the place of study will have books of only one subject and i'll recommend even one book also not multiple books because at any point of time you are going to refer one book only right so decluttered means one subject one book notebook pen paper everything ready right if possible ensure that there is some soothing fragrance also if you can manage ensure that this is not something synthetic something soothing fresh flowers good enough sandal smell good enough something soothing don't use chemicals number 3 keep water ready so don't have to get up again and again for having the drinking water because when you find difficulty your mind demands water again and again and in the course of a study it is going to happen so keep water always handy right so i told you decluttered table only one subject one book new pen paper calculator whatever you need everything should be there right then soothing fragrance as well as arrange water properly so you don't have to get up every 10 minutes okay <clears throat> Rule number four, this is follow Einstein pattern. This is a very powerful technique for a study. This I'll explain you sometime during the course. If you are following this, Anybody who follows this can become brilliant. But you must know what is Einstein pattern. This very, very powerful tool for learning study techniques. And this I will share you in the course. And the next comes number five. This is something problematic. This is making notes. Now, notes are meant for your own reference. Those are not meant for sharing. Your, and you cannot borrow notes, notes made by somebody else. Notes are for your reference. Notes are meant for the purpose of quick revision. So, you have to decide your own way how the notes should be prepared. But you cannot prepare notes unless you have revised the chapter or the topic at least three times. If you are reading and copying in the notebook, reading and taking the note in the notebook, it is a waste of your time. You are copy pasting, you are not making notes. Notes are brief. Those are meant for quick reference. Those are meant for revision. Those are something that is something personal. Neither you will share your notes nor you will borrow a note from anybody else because the perce perception of preparing the notes or the orientation is different. So neither share yours nor borrow from anybody else. Somebody wants your notes, you can very well give it, but you know exactly what, what you have written there and the other person may not know. So that's why I'm saying your notes are not to be shared. I'm not saying don't share, but no purpose because you know what, what for what is written and why it is written okay so when you are making the notes now in the process of making notes these notes should be either in the form of bullet points 
or maybe in the form of charts or in the form of mind maps i'm not saying prepare descriptive detailed notes you can very well prepare but in by making the descriptive notes you simply end up killing your time and that is a very very serious or criminal waste of your time rather if you have if you spend time for revising revise that topic or the chapter for minimum 3 times and then make notes in the form of bullet points in the form of charts in the form of mind maps and then this will make the subject easier for you because these are prepared only when you understand without understanding you if you are noting down something it is copy paste so without understanding if you make the notes friends those are not of any use so prepare notes after understanding so read the topic or the chapter minimum 3 times before you prepare the notes and these notes should be the most important thing these should be handwritten never ever prepare notes on computer you can prepare but initially notes should be handwritten when you are writing something with the hand handwriting keeps your mind always awake you see when you are holding the pen right you are pressing the pen with the three points of fingers and the thumb two fingers and the thumb at least right so these are directly connected to your brain your brain is consistently active when you are writing handwrite hand that's why i'm strongly recommending the notes should be handwritten they should not be prepared in the on laptop or on computer now once the notes are prepared then comes number 6 revision what is called revision and how the revision should be done when revision should be done how many times revision is required there is a fixed pattern generally if you ask yourself how many time did you revise before appearing for exam you said once or twice or thrice or four times or five times that is more than enough not at all if you understand what is the meaning of revision you will find that five ten revisions are very less but if you know the technique how to revise only then you can do revision 20 times 30 times 40 times but there is a technique without knowing the technique always you will find that every subject is having 1000 pages how do i revise it 10 times certainly you cannot because you are rereading you are not revising and i am against rereading i want you to read only in the beginning once twice or thrice before you prepare the notes and then later on revision revision is a different pattern so how the revision is done and what is what should be the revision pattern that i'll explain you during the process of my complete course right so when you're going through the course i'll keep on telling you everything as i told you about the einstein pattern so that also i'll explain you revision pattern this also i'll explain you in the process of the complete course number 7 this comes writing practice no preparing notes is one part this is not sufficient writing practice because if your exam is descriptive you have to write and if you don't have a writing practice you are, you, are, you cannot write all of a sudden for two and a half hours or three hours so this is one of the one of the reason that your paper is always left incomplete start practicing handwritten hand writing minimum 25 to 30 minutes every day and increase it by 5 minutes every week right so 25 minutes you can start even today also right continue for at least one full week 25 minutes keep a stop watch write for 25 minutes whatever you want to write write because we are developing writing practice right so maybe if you are writing something what you have read it is much better but if you write something different but write for continuously for 25 minutes that is improving your handwriting improving your speed and certainly it is keeping your mind engaged 
and when your mind is engaged that is a meditation okay then comes number 8 after writing practice then take test this is something which everybody wants to avoid directly or indirectly. But this is one way of testing yourself whether you have understood the things correctly or not. Number two, whatever you have learned, whether you have learned it for the purpose of application or it is only the superficial learning. Superficial learning is not of any use at all if you cannot apply that. Right? Say for example, if I tell you how to compute your income tax, theoretically you know how to compute, but if I give you the data of income of some individual and tell you to calculate the income tax, you are not able to calculate, then that is absolutely useless knowledge. In the process of test, you will understand whether what you have understood that you can apply or not, because application of the knowledge is the key of success. Knowledge is useless. Knowledge and application of that. So real thing is application plus knowledge. Only knowledge not of any use. So in the when you are appearing for the test or you are taking the test, you are applying the knowledge. And another reason that by chance if you find that you are not performing as, as per the expectations in the test, this is the time to prepare more. Rather than failing in the main exam, it is always better to fail in the test. Right? Take the test. Last, most powerful thing. Teach. Whatever you have learned, whatever it may be. If you think that you have understood correctly, explain it to somebody. Maybe your colleague, maybe your friend, whosoever he may be, explain that to that person. If you can explain that to somebody else, then you can believe that you have really understood it. This is one thing where majority fails. I'm not going, not telling you to take the proper class. No. Unless you are inclined to become a good teacher, that is a different story. But what is expected is you should be in a position to explain. Don't presume that yes, I have read and I have revised so many times I can always teach. No, teaching is a skill. So in the process of teaching, you know how to present your, your subject. So teaching is two things. Number one, you will learn the presentation skills, how you should present so that it is understood by the person in front. Number two, you can make the good presentation only when understanding is clear. So, two things will happen when you prepare for the purpose of teaching. Number one, you get the clarity. Number two, you get the complete flow. And that is required for the best scores in any exam. Whatever be the yearly exam, whether it is a professional exam or this is an academic exam or it is a competitive exam, doesn't make a difference. Every examiner likes a good flow of presentation. And if you know how to present your answer well, Success is bound to be yours in the exam. Friends, these are few tips before I take you to the formal course. Do follow these things throughout the course and I am going to guide you. Friends, once again, fixed time, fixed place. And being a student of online course, certainly this requires a different type of self-discipline very powerful whatever you decide follow that time you decide place you decide all the decisions are yours but whatever you decide follow those strictly see you in the next lecture which will be the formal lecture of your syllabus thank you